Okay. All right, the battery on the camera is getting a little low too. I need to change the camera. Okay. So anyway, so what we're going to do today is we're going to learn two more algebraic limits. And the first type has to do with radicals. The limit as x approaches 4 of 6 minus the square root of x plus 32 over x minus 4. Now, if you plug a 4 in, what do you get? Undefined. Good. You do get undefined, but more specifically. Does not exist. Or a zero. Something over zero. Okay, something over zero. What is that something? You think about it. Zero over zero. Zero over zero is what you get, right? After school. After school. Okay. All right. Okay. So anyway, yeah, you get 0 over 0. And 0 over 0 in limit world means what? Go on. Keep going. It means keep going. <laughs> that limit exists, right? Okay, so the limit exists, and so now what we need to do is figure out how to find it. Now, because you get 0 over 0, there's a common factor top and bottom. And you're getting 0 when you plug in a 4, which means, I'm just going to give you a hint, if it's x approaches 4, that common factor you're looking for is x minus 4. If it was x approaches 6, the common factor would be x minus 6. If it was x approaches 0, the common factor would just be x, right? It's whatever you're, you're approaching that kind of gives you the hint of the factor you're looking for. So how on earth are we going to get an x minus 4 out of this thing? We're going to actually kind of rationalize the numerator. We're going to multiply top and bottom by this fancy word, starts with a c. Conjugate. conjugate. Good. Very good. We're going to multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. Anyone know what the conjugate of the numerator is? Hmm. Fantastic. Yeah. When you're, when you're finding a conjugate, you're just changing the sign that separates the terms. You don't change every sign you see, just the one that separates the terms. So the conjugate is 6 plus root x plus 32. Now, off to the side, you don't have to write this down, but very quickly, I'm just going to show you what happens when you multiply something by its conjugate. And I'm going to give you a simpler example. x plus 2, x minus 2 are conjugates. Same term with different signs, right? When you multiply them together, what happens to the two middle terms? They cancel, they cancel out. They always cancel out. When you multiply something by its conjugate, those two middle terms will wash out. And so what we achieve when we multiply these two together is the square roots are going to get canceled out. And it helps us get a, a cleaner numerator. So what I want you guys to do, oh, first I'm going to give you one leading step and then I'm going to have you guys work. All right, little hint. I'm going to write something off to the side here. Uh, Never distribute the denominator. Okay. Just keep it factored. Yes. Just keep it factored. So the denominator, you're just going to keep exactly how it looks. Don't multiply it out. But I want you guys to take a minute and multiply the two numerators together. See if you can figure out what you get. So take a minute, distribute the numerators. Once you get it cleaned up, compare your answer with your group mates. Make sure you guys match. Thank you. 
thought it was uh, negative x minus or plus 68. Because well, you do 36 because 6 squared is 36. So then, and then it's a minus because it's like x squared minus 4. Minus, and then you have this x plus 32. No, you have x plus 32 because the square root is only. Because it's like the 4 would be 2 squared. The 4 would be 2 squared. So this. Alright, I hear great discussion. We've got to move on because of the short schedule today. So, 6 times 6, you all got that's 36, right? The inner and outer terms are gone. So it's really just the first times the first term, and then the last times the last term. So we have minus root x plus 32 times root x plus 32, which is just x plus 32. One of the most prevalent mistakes that I saw, it was funny, the different versions of your last test, there were different mistakes depending on the version you had. So each version of the test had its own unique little pitfalls that a lot of you fell into. One version uh, in the second problem, with the, it was the f of x plus h problem, the function was at, uh, 4 minus x squared. And I'm going to say out of the 35 that had that version, 32 of you did not distribute the negative properly. So you have to be careful when you are subtracting that you make sure, you, if you're subtracting a quantity, you've got to put it in parentheses. Be very careful about your parentheses because if you do something simple that seems like a small mistake, for algebra, if, the, if this was the end, it would be a small mistake. But what we have to do is we have to use this going forward. And when you've got to use what you've got going forward, if you make that little mistake, you're going to get lost, right? It's going to not work, right? So you've got to make sure you distribute that negative. So what we end up with here, when you simplify it all down, we have 36 minus 32, which is 4, and then minus x. How'd you guys, how'd you guys do on that one? <laughs> Questions on that? Now, we need to find common factors. We're supposed to be looking for an x minus 4, but we don't have that top and bottom. Are we done? Are we stuck? Or is there something we can do? What did you say? Pull out the negative. Pull out the negative. OK. We, this looks a lot like x minus 4, right? It's really close. It's just off by a factor of negative 1. So what we're going to do is factor a negative 1 out. and then rewrite it as negative times x minus 4. Do you all understand that you can do that? Yeah. Okay. All right. Now, what can we do? Say it loud. Say it proud. Cancel. Cancel what? X minus 4. X minus 4s. X minus 4s can now be canceled. Now, what's left on top? There's no number there. Negative one. Negative one, right? Okay, so once you cancel your common factor, you can go ahead and plug the 4 into the function if you want to. On top is a negative 1. There's no variables there to plug into. On the bottom, when we replace our x with a 4, we get 6 plus root 36, which is the total 12. So this is our limit. Our limit is negative one twelfth. Set. Yes. Um, whenever you're doing um, factoring, do you have to do it in order? Like, would it be plus or minus? Like, um, or are the square root part like plus or minus six? Like, um. Tell me where you want to put the plus or minus. Oh, just at the very end, like whenever you do it. Um, like, you know, oh. Okay. Remember, guys, when we when we are presented with a, with a quadratic. This was another mistake a lot of you made. Um, you know what, I'm going to use one. This was the middle problem on the second page was you had to compose two functions and then find the domain. And you ended up with like a square root of 
different versions, x squared minus 5, x squared minus 3, different stuff like that, right? And so a lot of people told me that. Tons. So probably more than didn't. But remember, when you're solving a quadratic, you have to put that plus or minus because it's a quadratic two solutions. If we could, if we wanted to, we could have factored it, right? Right. And then we get our two solutions that way. So when you're solving a quadratic, you're going to have two solutions. You're going to have that plus or minus in front. But if I just say, hey, x is root 5, then that's all it is. You don't get to put your own plus or minus there. Do you see the difference? Mm -hmm. All I said was, hey, x is the root the square root of 5. I didn't say it was plus or minus. I just said it was the root 5. So when you're handed just a radical to start with, you don't get to add a plus or minus to it. The only time we put in a plus or minus is when we're solving a quadratic and using this little shortcut method where we take the square root of both sides. So that, because there are two solutions to the quadratic. Does that make sense? Do you see the difference? So if we start with a quadratic, you're right, put the plus or minus. If you start with the root, don't add your own plus or minus to it. Okay. All right, so I'm going to give you guys one quick one to try before we move into the second type of algebraic limits today, which is complex fractions. Okay. All right, so very quickly... So we're going to do, I'm going to move the camera over so I get this on the screen. Okay, so we're going to do the limit as x approaches 0 of the square root of x plus 4 minus 2 all over x. Why don't you guys in your groups right now take a minute and see if you can solve this start to finish. Do the rationalizing, do the distributing, cancel any common factors, and find your limit. All right. Okay. 